Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck, and I teach all about parenting, good communication, family relationships, and even education all over the world through the lens of self-government. And in this video, I'm talking about teaching time management to kids. In this video, I'm going to be talking about why kids struggle with time management and when is the best time to start teaching them time management. And then also, we're going to talk about how to actually help them learn time management and start keeping track of time themselves. For years, I did treatment foster care for troubled teens. They were all between the ages of 12 and 18. And do you know what? There were hardly any of those teens that were actually really great at time management. That was something that I had to teach nearly all of them. I won't say everyone, because there were a couple that could time manage, but for the most part, no. It was just a skill that they didn't have. They hadn't been taught yet. Also, I've raised four children of my own and I've actually homeschooled them, which means they had to be in charge of a lot of their own education. This meant that they had to learn time management. So how did I teach all of these children time management? That's what we're going to talk about. But first, it's important for us to understand that it is difficult to learn time management. In fact, it's probably one of the hardest skills that people learn. Come on, think about it. We all know adults who are not great at time management. They're late to everything. They always say, oh, well, I didn't get that done. They don't follow through with things. These are people who struggle continually with working as part of a group. Sometimes they make things at work hard for their coworkers because they just have a hard time with follow through. Well, there are different personalities of people. We need to recognize that. There are some people that are planners. They like to be planned. They look ahead of, for what's coming and how much time they've got, and they make sure that they're prepared ahead of time. That's just part of their hard wiring or maybe even part of their nurturing or how they were raised. Then there are other people who are live in the moment people. These live in the moment people, they see that the sun is shining. They want to go out and enjoy the sun and forget that maybe they had housework that needed to be done or a project for work that needed to happen. There are people who get talking with someone in the lounge at the office and they forget that they actually have a job to do at the office. These are people who, whatever moment they're in, they just enjoy it and they make people feel special too. So usually these people have really great social skills because they're willing to take the time for the other people. So while they may not follow through naturally with things and have to really rein themselves in to do it, they are really great at making people feel important and they have social skills that oftentimes end up moving their business objectives forward even though they're not getting the to-do list done that's on the side. So depending on personality or maybe how someone was nurtured in their upbringing, they might be more of a planner or more of a live in the moment person. Now the ideal, if a person can capitalize on the live in the moment experiences when it's the most important, but then also have that plan in the back of their mind that they can be following through with. When a person reaches full maturity, hopefully they can have a nice mix of those two things so that they can accomplish all the things that they need to and keep in alignment with their priorities, which hopefully involve the people. But children especially struggle with their planning because number one, it has to be taught. Number two, they are spontaneous just by nature as children. There are new experiences that are exciting. This throws them off course. They get distracted very easily because their prefrontal cortexes are very small. And so emotional moments can jar them and throw them off track. Sometimes if they get stressed about something like maybe a school subject, then suddenly they can get overwhelmed by stress and then not follow through with the school subject. So these are all things things that take time to get through and to develop. So when a person learns proper time management, it really is them learning to develop themselves. We're going to talk about the best age to start time management teaching and how to teach our children time management. But before we do, click the subscribe button now. There are a lot of great videos on this channel that are dedicated to helping you and your children communicate better and for everyone in the 
the family to learn proper self-government, which really means self-management. And that's why we're talking about time management today. So click the subscribe button now and don't forget that notification bell so that you're also notified when new videos come out. So how do we teach time management to children and when should we start? Do you know what? It's actually never too early to start. So you are going to be the person that nurtures time management in your children. If you are a person who likes to manage your time, then probably they will learn some of that just from your nurturing. So if you live according to a kind of a schedule, now being careful to make sure that we can keep our priorities straight because some people who live according to a schedule get so obsessed about the schedule that they forget to take time to bond and connect together with the people, which should be our higher priorities, especially if we're focused on creating a united family, which is what I am all about. Making sure that you say, okay, hey, first thing in the day, we're going to do this. Then we're going to move on to this. We're going to get our chores done probably around this time. We're going to have our food times probably around these times. We're going to take some time to play, making sure that we schedule in downtime, time to just talk and cuddle and communicate as a family. But if we make sure that we are prioritized as parents and we schedule in time for all the essentials, then our children will learn that they can be very happy living according to a schedule. So this means that they will feel less anxiety as they are growing up in our homes. Everyone loves to have some structure. And when we structure things for our children when they're younger, then our children have less anxiety. This helps them develop more responsibility for themselves instead of getting sidetracked by all the feelings of overwhelm or the upcoming to-do list that they might have for themselves as they start to mature. Probably the best time to start talking really deliberately about time management is when a child gets to the stage where they start having specific goals for themselves. So when they're young, they live in the moment a lot and this can last until a person even hits about age 12 or so. But usually around age 12, we start talking about, okay, what are some of our goals? What are our objectives for maybe these academic pursuits or this hobby that we're working on, or we want to create better friend relationships. What should we do about that? Now you can start these conversations as early as I would say maybe eight years old, but usually for sure by age 12, you want to start having these conversations and start developing time blocks that they can schedule for themselves. If they make goals for themselves, then they'll want to schedule their time blocks so that they can accomplish their goals. Otherwise it will feel very unfulfilling to even set a goal because they won't ever follow through. The book that I'm most known for is this book here called Parenting a House United. In this book, I talk about certain skills that we teach children in order to help them learn self-government. There are four basic skills that we teach children to help them learn to conquer all of their negative behavior problems. Those four basic skills that I taught to children of all ages, even 17 year olds that came to my home, even two year olds that are barely learning to talk. The four basic skills are following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences and disagreeing appropriately. So how do these four basic skills help with time management? Well, a person who is self-governed gives themselves no answers on a regular basis. If they get a distraction that comes in and is going to throw off their schedule, they give themselves a no answer about that distraction. And then they give themselves an instruction for what they should do to follow through with their planned schedule. Learning how to accept no answers from parents and follow instructions from parents is going to prepare a child to give themselves no answers and to follow their own instructions when they are trying to do time management for themselves. So teaching those four basic skills and correcting the children and praising the children when things go wrong or right is going to help them learn to correct themselves and notice when they're doing good at following through with their skill development too. And it will prepare them to empower them to do it for themselves moving forward. So make sure you teach your children what self-government is and isn't so that they can also be prepared to know which direction they're going. When children know the why behind doing these things like following instructions and accepting no answers, which is living that principle of self-government and having the freedom that comes with that, then they're more motivated to do the things like 
scheduling their lives that will lead them to proper self-government. In the book, Parenting House United, I talk about having regular mentor sessions with my children. So every week we have a meeting. Our mentor meeting is the time where we talk about all of their different goals and their commitments that they want to make as they get a little bit older. So in this book, our mentor journal, each child has one of these books and they have a schedule in them for the week. They talk about their fun goals, their spiritual goals, their academic goals, their social goals, relationship goals, behavior goals, even have a place to make commitments, set dates with parents, and establish new goals with mom and dad. It's a time to catch up with the parents on how I'm doing with my goals and a time to set new goals or objectives for the upcoming week. So every single Sunday afternoon, me and my husband would have these one-on-one -on -one meetings with our children. They were personal planning meetings just for them. They loved those meetings. Those meetings were times where we could talk about anything. They were completely safe places. There weren't going to be times where we would get upset with them. Not that we ever did anyway, because we're really calm parents, but it wasn't a time where we were going to be loading on criticism or anything like that. It was a time where we, we were going to talk to them about who they thought they were, where they were going and what they needed from us in order to accomplish that and what type of skill development maybe we could help them learn so that they could accomplish their goals and objectives in life. And then every single day as they would plan their free time, they would refer back to their mentor journal and to that meeting they had with us and maybe even tell us before their free time, hey, during my independent study time today, I'm going to be reading this book or I'm going to work on these math lessons because that's what I've planned for the week to get this many math lessons done. And then they would check up with us at the end and maybe even put check marks by the side of the things that they accomplished that we had talked about in their weekly meeting. So having a weekly meeting with your child is really valuable. So let's recap. If you have good time management or if you're at least working on your time management and you talk about time management with your children, that's going to help them. Also, if you teach them how to give themselves no answers, follow instructions and correct themselves and praise themselves over time, they are going to be able to not only do those things with you, but also start using those skills just with themselves, which leads to greater maturity. Also make sure that you prioritize in your family because priorities help people better manage their time. Also having meetings, times where we make a deliberate plan and have deliberate follow through are going to be very powerful moments when you're helping your child. If you've loved this video, I know that you're going to love my next video, which goes into more detail about the skills that your children need for self-government. That video is called the not so known secret for parenting success. Click on a link to that video now, and I'll see you there.